they're all the same. They're all on the take. They're all in it for themselves. How many have allowed themselves to fall for that lazy, destructive cynicism about those we elect to represent us? The killing of Sir David Amos, a 69-year-old man who chose to spend his Friday not playing golf or watching his favourite box set, but sitting in a church meeting people with problems they wanted his help to solve, is a reminder that politics is often so much better than that. Sir David was not a regular in front of this microphone or on those TV politics talk shows. He was never part of any speculation about moves up the greasy pole. He was quite simply what so many MPs are, a passionate advocate for his town and his people, as I found out when I spent the day yesterday with those in mourning him in his Essex constituency. That's in Michael's church in Leon C. They're mourning, they're remembering, they're celebrating a man who was much more than their local MP. He was this town's favourite son, their champion, the man who spent every day trying to put South End on the map, but not this way. Councillor John Lamb, chairman of South End West Constituency Party as well. The thing with David was, he used to go out to meet the people. He would talk to you on a par, he'd deal with your problems and try and be very positive in what he could do. And does it matter that he wasn't a big figure on the national stage? Not to us it didn't, and it didn't to him. Uh, I mean, he had ambition, but it was for other things, not to get on the front bench. It was, can I achieve for the town? And he was tireless. There's a funny thing in this church. You're mourning a man, but there's a lot of smiles on faces. What did David always do? He smiled. Yes, we're all sad that he has gone, but we all are happy that he was with us and that is where he wanted to end up in the end. It's just a terrible shame the way that he died and lost his life. But he was a happy person and he tried to bring that joy to everyone else in the town. Looking at this sea of flowers, just a few yards away from where Sir David Amos was killed, what's striking is how personal the messages are about the help he gave people. Here is one that says, you are always there for me and us as a community. Another, your help will never be forgotten. A third in a child's handwriting, many thanks for everything you've done, not just for me, but for Southend as a whole. There is a sense then that these tributes are not merely a reflection of shock, of grief, but a tribute to the work he did as, yes, a member of parliament. Someone not wanting to be on the national political stage, but to be a champion for the community he lived in. He was, you know, always there if you needed advice or just like simple things and you would email him or whatever. A couple of days he'd get back to you, all sorted. What sort of things would he help people out with? He helped me out with a situation regarding my daughter when she didn't get into a school that we wanted and, you know, he went above and beyond actually to help her there. One of my neighbours contacted him regarding a, a big wooden pole that was put up outside her house. Two days, he'd emailed back, the pole was moved. <laughs> I mean, you know, he was there for everybody. If you bumped into him on the street, that beaming smile of his, and he always shook your hand. So ladies and gentlemen, the Music Man Project, it's conquered the Royal Albert Hall. There's only one place they're going, and that is Broadway. I am a music man ambassador. I do drums. You do the drums? Jabberings, singing and songing, I boogie boogie, like that. Including at the Royal Albert Hall? Yes. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, I, happy. A happy night, yeah. And who was that? What started as a charity in South End to make music for people with learning difficulties, went on to be a national organisation. 
capable of filling the Albert Hall. That was in no small part due to Sir David Amos. So says the founder of the Music Man Project, David Stanley. And Sam Hater, who has Down syndrome and performed that day. David Amos saw the value of music education for people with learning disabilities. But more than that, he championed people that were vulnerable, that were isolated. You know, a few decades ago, they would have been hidden away. So David had that vision and helped us reach the Albert Hall. And more importantly, actually, he helped us have Music Man projects all around the country. Even raising it at Prime Minister's questions. Well, we broke the world record for the most amount of triangles played at once. 1,521 triangles in a, in a piece of music that I composed called Concerto for Trumpet, Trombone and 1,521 Triangles. And then he went to the House of Commons and the very next opportunity he declared in front of uh, Prime Minister Theresa May, well, we have broken the world record, surely now we should be a city. Because he knew that through him he could help us get somewhere. And that's because he had real belief in people. He was the absolute ideal constituency MP. So are you saying that you might still be a little local charity if it hadn't been for the help he gave you? 100%. So he has put us on the map. Going through. Southend now has just the one MP, James Dudridge. David touched everybody's lives. Everyone felt... They knew David because they'd had an interaction and he was certainly memorable. You were never in the room without him playing a prank and relaxing people, him making the most out of the meeting and finding out what needs to be done and then taking action. So David Amos could have had so many political enemies. After all, he pursued so many divisive causes. He was anti-abortion. He was anti-fox hunting. He was pro-Brexit. But, and it is a crucial but... He was pro his town. He was pro his people. He was pro South End. He must have had a doppelganger. The more stories I'm being told, he's done more than 40 years work as an MP. <laughs> it's fascinating that David Amos met one constituent with a medical condition he said he'd never heard of, endometriosis, and then ended up leading a national campaign. That's typical of David, and I think he particularly looked for underdogs. That issue was, was not being highlighted being prepared to be out of step, as he was out of step on animal welfare and fox hunting issues with a number of Conservatives. But he was a more powerful advocate because of that. And then more recently, he's, he's taken a step out on city status, which is about creating pride in the town and regenerating the town in the broadest sense. James Dudridge used to have doubts about all the security measures he was told to install. Measures you might expect to see at a high street bank. He has those doubts, no more. We've got, we've got CCTV cameras on the outside, so... Um... Uh, since David's uh, uh, passing, I've been carrying a personal alarm that puts me straight through to the police. The office which has sat today has reinforced windows, bars. We only get appointments coming in. However, when we're out and about, I'll take a bus in the summer and go all around and people come onto the bus and that's advertised and no appointments needed in many ways. That's more helpful to me in understanding what constituents want. And what about friends, family? Are they beginning to reconsider your job and saying, well, is this really wise what you do? Um, no one that loves me or no, none of my friends would want me to be a Member of Parliament. The only reason they, want, they support it is because they know that that's what I believe it's a, an honourable thing to do, something I've enjoyed. None of them would want you to do it. Why, why is that? Um, I mean, just multiple reasons. You, you, you give up a lot of your, your life, your privacy, people's perception of you. You know, there's a, there's a presumption that you're not, not a good person, you're in it for yourself. Um, and that's, that's a real sadness. The killing of an MP, another MP, came as a terrible shock. But let's be honest, not quite the same shock there was when Joe Cox was murdered six years ago. Once again, we find ourselves asking the question, how do we treat those we elect to represent us? Um, so you can only be so secure. Um, and it's quite poignant that right next to the security system is a picture of you with David Amos, oh, yeah. arms aloft, That's, when yeah. you won an election. 
Oh, so I remember that well because I said to David, what we want is we want the front page of the Echo with you and I, victorious, holding our hands together and kind of South End United. A nice memory. That was South End United and now South End is? Well, South End only has one MP at the moment, so, you know, myself and neighbours outside South End will do our best to help represent the constituency and battle for city status. There's nothing normal about what's happened. There's nothing normal about what's going to happen. And speaking to Jo Cox's people around her, it doesn't get much better quickly. It lasts the grief. Yeah, but the whole town. Although clearly some people are deeply affected, the family, the staff, but the whole community. I want South End to be known for the pier, for the airport, for having city status, for the football club doing slightly better than it is now, not a place of great sadness where, where David passed. What this week has reminded us, has reminded us all, is that politics is about so much more than the job you have or the job you aspire to get. So much more than the number of interviews you do or the number of social media followers you have. It is at best about public service. It is about changing lives. And sometimes you can even do that with a big smile on your face. That is Sir David Amos's legacy.